Welcome to the Maker's Muse review of the Wanhell Duplicator i3. This review has been a long time coming and hopefully you'll understand why. The Duplicator i3 first caught my attention in June this year, mostly due to its all metal construction, which sets it apart from other low end i3 clones, which are mostly constructed from laser cut acrylic. Its cost is also ridiculously low for a printer of its build volume, and at the time the machine set me back 520 bucks Australian, including the shipping from China. It has a heated bed with a build volume of 200 by 200 by 180 millimeters, and comes almost fully assembled. You simply need to secure the gantry in place to the base with four screws. The machine is constructed entirely from folded sheet metal, even the fan shroud of the extruder on the i3 is metal, which is pretty ridiculous. It's heavy duty, however once assembled there still is a little bit of flex in the gantry. Still nothing to be too worried about. Wenhouse's decision to have the electronics box completely free floating and only joined to the printer via an umbilical cord of wires is pretty terrible if you ask me. Don't plan on transporting your printer much at all, as every time you do, you risk breaking one of these wires and it'll be a total nightmare to track it down and repair. The control box itself houses the power supply with, in my case, a hugely loud and poor quality fan. and a Chinese clone of the RepRap Melzi board, which is an all-in-one stepper driver and brains for your 3D printer. You can use the printer tethered through the USB port to a PC, or load G-code onto the microSD card, which by the way is pretty hard to fit through the metal slot and more than a little tedious to use. There's also a few other questionable design decisions. For example, the Y-axis timing belt rubs hard against the linear bearing blocks from the factory, which will no doubt cause premature failure of the belt. And the Z-limit switch in my case is seemingly random, but we'll get to that in a moment, as I have to mention the primary reason I've taken so long to review this printer. Long story short, it broke after its third print. I had completed two successful 15 hour plus prints in PLA with no issues whatsoever. However, midway through the third, it stopped mid print and the print had jammed. At the time, I had no idea what had broken, so I went through a long and tedious troubleshooting process, which quite frankly, I didn't really have the time for, so the printer ended up sitting idle for months. Lo and behold, Wanhao finally admitted to a huge fault in the position of the heater block crimps, causing them to fatigue and fail prematurely as the printer was moving, which is exactly what happened to my machine. With this fixed, however, I was quickly up and printing again, though two key issues remained for my machine. Firstly, the heat block seriously struggles to stay at temperature. Yes, it did arrive from the factory with insulating tape, which I removed in a rushed and somewhat futile troubleshooting attempt very early on. But even without this tape, the Mark 10 extruders I've had experience with in the Flashforge machines have no issues getting to 250 degrees or higher, whereas my Wayne house struggles to stay at anything over 200 degrees C. I think this has something to do with the heat tube being too small for the machined hole, so instead of being a nice tight fit for the heat to propagate out, it can easily wobble and needs to be tensioned in place with a grub screw. In fact, I actually wrapped mine with a single layer of aluminium foil and it legitimately improved the extruder's capability to stay at temperature. Crazy. As of right now, I've only really had success printing in PLA on my Wanhao Duplicator i3, as my machine can't reach temperatures high enough for ABS. However, again, this is probably due to the lack of the insulation tape on my machine, and your results may vary. I completed several prints using Cura and Repetia via tethering, and while it worked fine, I have simplified 3D at my disposal, so I quickly moved on to that. Forget about caching to the printer via USB, the serial over USB speeds are appallingly slow, direct to the SD card is really the only way to go in my opinion. Simplify 3D actually has a preset profile for the Wanhal Duplicator i3, and all I did to mine was modify the extruding temperature to 210 degrees C for PLA. I printed it with a raft and changed the print speed to 3600 millimeters per minute. So onto the micro SD card, I actually got so sick of fiddling with it that I sourced a micro SD to standard SD adapter from Dill Extreme. This greatly improved my user experience because I like to handle larger SD cards, and I can now go from slicing to printing very quickly without fumbling. In my opinion, it was $5 very well spent. Okay, I've complained a lot so far, and a lot of you guys are probably pretty upset with me for ripping into the one house so hard. However, when it gets down to it, all we really care about is how well it prints. Am I right? And the one how actually prints really, really well. It's not the best printer I've ever used, but it's far from the worst. Once it's up and running, I'm confident enough to leave the house and let this thing print away, and then I come back to a print you know, 17 hours later, like the recently printed Halloween special, I did a candy bowl, and it worked perfectly other than a few supports falling over, which is due to the terrible Z-axis leveling on my machine. 
Sometimes it's too close and sometimes it's too far away from the bed. And this isn't because the bed's unlevel indeed. I spent ages leveling the bed to get a flawless print, but then the next day I'll do another print where it rehomes and it will be totally wrong again. So I'm gonna put this down to the machine using very cheap micro switches. And in fact, I've had some people tell me that the machines have arrived with completely non-functioning micro switches, but the homing switches are very easy to source, very easy to replace, and one of the first mods I'll probably do to my printer. It's a very easy thing to change. And I think that's 100% the charm of the Wanhao. It's a tinkerer's dream. It's a cheap printer with good capabilities, and it's built around an open source platform, which can be modified, tweaked and improved on. And that's the key fact because pretty much all of my complaints about the machine have already been fixed by the community over at Google Groups. And people are now getting phenomenal prints off their Wanhao i3s because the hardware is capable of it. It just needs a helping hand to get there. So in summary, do I recommend the Wanhao duplicator i3? I suppose it comes down to who you are. Are you a school or newcomer to 3D printing? If so, don't buy this machine. You will be overwhelmed when something goes wrong, and if you're unable to fix it, the poor one how will sit in the corner gathering dust and resentment. However, if you're an avid tinkerer, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are, and you like to take things apart, see how they work, and you have a good grasp of how FDM printers actually work, the Wanhao i3 is a super budget machine, super budget 3D printer, with a ton of capability, if only you give it the helping hand to get there. Also keep in mind that the Chinese are very good at incorporating continual improvements to their machines. So your generation of printer will no doubt be far superior to my early model i3. Also, if you're curious to see just how far you can push the Wanhao i3, be sure to check out Jet Guy's videos. He's done awesome things to his printer to fix basically every issue I've complained about, and he's getting really, really good prints as a result from it. So thanks for watching, guys. Let me know in the comments if you have anything to share on your i3 experiences. Would you prefer to get a cheap printer as a fix-me-up? or do you prefer to have a more expensive ready to run unit? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you want to see more 3D printing content, then be sure to subscribe and I'll see you again soon here on Maker's Muse. Bye guys.